thank you for joining us today for the ABA Torts Trials Insurance Practice FSLC Vlog Series of 2024. Today we'll be discussing beyond the gavel how arbitrator selection shapes dispute resolution. My name is Iman Heider Lees. I am the AAA Construction Vice President for the Southeast and Midwest region, and I'm joined here today with my colleague. Hello, I am Jacqueline Vega Cintron. I am the AAA Vice President in the Construction Division for the Northeast region. All right, Jackie, let's get right into the meat of, you know, why arbitrator selection is so important. You know, we talk a lot about how selecting the neutral really influences the process of what's going on in the case. And it is so important to really have a neutral and an arbitrator that understands the background of what's going on um, for your particular subject matter. You know, for this particular group, I think it's great that, you know, you would find an arbitrator that has experience in dealing with fidelity issues, surety issues, insurance issues as well. So that's something we definitely recommend that the parties look at when they are looking for a neutral. Let's talk a little bit about how they act as a neutral and whether or not we have a single or a panel. Sure. So, um, you know, we do call them neutrals, but we also expect that of them, right? So throughout the lifetime of the case, we expect an arbitrator to be neutral and to have um, no bias and to act with impartiality. Um, even if they are party appointed arbitrators, we still expect them to be neutral. And we'll talk a little bit more about their code of ethics later on. Um, and like you said, there could be two scenarios. You have one single arbitrator here the case or three arbitrators here the case. Those are usually saved for the larger claims. Um, and in that, you can can also have a streamlined panel option at the AAA where you have three arbitrators, but you're saving the cost on all three and having one arbitrator, the chair, decide all threshold matters, um, discovery issues, things like that. But you're preserving the three arbitrator panel for the hearing and for award writing. Right. And you know, what's really interesting. This comes up and we can do a lot of our firm visits. How much is the actual cost of having a panel of three versus a single? Oh, it's about five times. So if you're right. if you're agreeing between the parties, of course, we can't do this without party agreement. But if you're agreeing to the streamline panel option, everyone's saving money. Right. That's the most one of the most important, you know, values of arbitrators uh, selection and actually going through the arbitrator process. So let's talk about what we actually consider when we're selecting an arbitrator. You know, I think one of the main things really is that you, your arbitrator or your arbitrators, you know, if you have a panel, really needs to understand the difference between arbitrator and litigation. Arbitration is not litigation light. You're not going to have a whole world of uh, uh, discovery done on a case. You're not going to have a bunch of motion practice done as well. So it's really important to have an arbitrator that understands what the differences are so they can actually shepherd you through the process. You know, I do agree that it is the party's process, but it's really the arbitrator's role to guide you through it and make sure that it stays cost effective and time effective. So you definitely want someone who understands that. But even beyond that, you want to have faith in your arbitrator that they can really make a crucial decision on what's going on, not just in the process, but also with the final decision of the case. So you do want to feel comfortable with the arbitrator. You know, I always recommend maybe you look them up online as well, see if there's any past decisions that they've um, had posted online that you could look into. But definitely, you know, have someone that you have faith in that can go through this process and make a very crucial and important decision for the end of your case. So Jackie, tell me a little bit about the expertise and experience. Sure. So when you're selecting your arbitrator, you want to review their resumes, right? And those resumes should have everything from, you know, what they did during their day job before they became arbitrators. And then also what they've done as a neutral. You want to see, um, you know, what maybe that difference is and how that has carried over into their role as an arbitrator. So you want to review those resumes and make sure that the arbitrator you're selecting has the correct expertise and experience for your case at hand. Um, and then to take that a little further, the AAA, there's also the enhanced arbitrator selection process for large cases. Again, by party agreement, you can reach out to the AAA and have the AAA ask more questions of the arbitrator. You can put together a little questionnaire between the parties and we'll reach out to them so that they give, can give you more information about any specifics that you might not have seen on their resume. Um, and you want to take that a little step further, then you can also agree to actually do an interview by phone or video of any arbitrator of your choice. This is also organized through your case manager, so make sure to be in contact with them. Great. So let's talk a little bit more about things that you need to consider when selecting an arbitrator. You know, we, we, you know, there's the arbitrator code of ethics 
and, and you know the canons that are involved there and a lot of them really talk about whether or not your neutral is actually neutral and impartial so what's really great about going through the arbitrator selection process is that they're required to make disclosures and you have time to review these disclosures to see if you again once again have faith in your arbitrator to be impartial and neutral and you know What's really great is that most administrators will also have a process in place that deals with disclosure issues. So there's not really a situation in which your arbitrator is probably aware that there's a conflict that has been brought up by one of the parties and then is directly involved with, uh, you know, the disclosure review and whether or not they're going to stay on the case or not stay on the case. So what's really great about having an administrator help you through this process is that we'll deal with what I call the awkward conversations there. Mm -hmm. um, and what is also really great is being able to communicate outside of the disclosure issues and the impartiality and, and neutrality part of it is that being able to communicate with the arbitrator is fantastic. So Jackie, tell me a little bit about why effective communication skills are so important. Sure. I mean, that really goes to keeping an arbitration on track, right? Um, you can have emails going back and forth between attorneys where an arbitrator might need to step in or make some kind of decision quickly. Um, threshold matters that are that are given to the arbitrator right out of the gate. Um, a lot of times there are conference calls set via email, you know, for the same week sometimes. And if you're not having those effective communication skills, then you're not going to be able to move the arbitration process along like they should be. Um, and then, of course, if you set your expectations for how the arbitrator is going to run the case, then the parties know what they're getting and, and the process is going to, as you said before, um, be shepherded by an effective arbitrator. Right. And so that goes right into their ability to manage the process. Right. So it's not just about, OK, we're, you know, we're going to keep on the schedule. We're going to keep on track of what's going on. So you want to find an arbitrator that's really going to manage the process, meaning they don't just give you deadlines and then you follow the deadlines, you get to the final hearing and you're done. But how do you deal with potential interim issues? So let's say there is an issue with discovery and, and some claim documentation has not been turned in, some damage documentation has not been turned in. How are you going to deal with that issue? So you want to have an arbitrator that's going to say, okay, in the interim portion of this case between the preliminary hearing and the final hearing, if there is a dispute issue, this is how we're going to deal with it. Maybe you turn in a three-page request to hear what's going on and then a three-page reply. Or let's say um, there is a delay and something is going on. You know, you want the arbitrator to have a certain number of maybe status conferences or ways mm -hmm. to follow up on the status of the case as well to make sure that things are running smoothly. Um, so beyond that, let's talk a little bit about the other other touch that the arbitrator can have in terms of cultural sensitivity and diversity awareness. Sure. So the AAA really prides ourselves on having a diverse panel, and we continue to work towards it becoming more and more diverse every day. Um, but you want an arbitrator who does have cultural sensitivity and diversity awareness because these are real people, right? You know, we talk a lot about things on paper and, and numbers and claim amounts, but there are real people who are at the heart of this case and what they're going through. Um, so when an arbitrator is hearing a case, it's important for them to remember that. And then also at the hearings, when they are, you know, hearing witness testimony or going through any kind of document production and exhibits, you know, it's important for them to have that sensitivity and awareness so that they can better understand those witnesses, what they've gone through, their interpretation of events and things like that, so that, you know, that arbitrator can have a better um, understanding and therefore a more favorable outcome for the case as a whole. Fantastic. All right. I think that wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Jackie, any closing words? No, I want to say thank you to everyone for joining. And you can always reach out to the AAA for any of your ADR questions. Thanks so much.